The year 2008 at market regulator SEBI began with a change of guard, with CV Bhave taking over the reins from M. Damodaran. The change was accompanied by concern in the markets that the new chairman may chart a different course. Even though there remained the FM's oversight, the first indication of shift in stance was the reversal of a policy put in place in October 2007 that limited FIIS P notes exposure to 40% of their total assets. The restrictions on ODIs on derivatives will be removed and also the restriction on having only 40% ODIs on the cash investments will also be removed. These were times when the regulator was under intense pressure to stem the outflow of FII funds following the global financial meltdown and the October crash to 7,700 levels, followed by corporate honchos' howls of stock manipulation, got SEBI to examine the overseas stock lending by FIIs and initiate changes in domestic stock lending and borrowing mechanism. We disapprove of this lending borrowing activity abroad and if it doesn't have uh, the effect that we have in mind, then we won't hesitate from taking sterner action. But that didn't help put a lid on the crisis. Another leak emerged in the mutual fund industry, with large investors drawing down their exposure to fixed maturity plans and putting the interest of other investors in such schemes in jeopardy. SEBI, in order to plug the widening gap, modified regulations that mandate all such schemes to close-ended, with compulsion to list them on stock exchanges. For all closed-ended schemes, no early exit will be provided by the funds. All these schemes will have to be listed on the stock exchange. So if there is a secondary market, the investor can have an exit. 2008 has been a year of reactions for SEBI, a year of policy tweaks to suit the rapidly changing circumstances. The two important issues that will spill over to 2009 are a review of FII policy structure, including registration norms and the issue of corporate governance that has acquired center stage post the development at Satyam Computer. The matter of a forged letter sent to Pyramid Saimira promoters also remains unresolved. SEBI Chief C.B. Bhave would perhaps be praying for a less turbulent 2009. In Mumbai with Vijay Ganeshan, Ketan Thakkar for NDTV. So even as the market regulator looks at various uh, issues and aspects of how to regulate investment into the country and make sure that uh, they are disciplined enough, it looks like some of the key investors in the private equity space who have had a rough time are now looking for better opportunities. So how has the private equity landscape changed in the last one year and what lies ahead in 2009? When the year began with a clutch of private equity funds pumping in over a billion bucks into Bharti star business, everybody had little doubt how the PEPs would pan out in 2008. But as valuations tanked and the markets went into a tizzy, Private equity fund managers decided to sit tight and wait for the tide to turn. Public market investments simply froze as nobody wanted to book mark-to-market losses. And private companies just couldn't agree on valuations. The shrinkage was clear in both deal value and volumes. In 2008, private equity deal volumes shrunk by 22% and their value by a staggering 45%. Money came into selective sectors, real estate, telecom and infrastructure. The shrinkage was clear in both deal value and volumes. Real estate was the surprise pack as $3 billion of private equity money flew in thick and fast in a sector battered down by most. But it was more selective in project special purpose vehicles. Low cost housing and a mix of infrastructure and realty was clearly the preferred pick. As Phoenix Mills, DLF and Unitech got fresh funding. How will 2009 pan out? Funds like Actis, ICICI Ventures and Chris Capital have raised over a billion dollars each but have been sitting pretty. Some funds like Chris and Nalanda Capital have also intensified secondary market transactions as valuations nosedived. So, will 2009 see a burst in PE action? Uh, there's a whole bunch of private equity and financial sponsors out there with the powder dry. So, I guess there will be um, some interesting thing which may happen. but. Um, fundamentally, I think it's going to be a tough one. So will Suzlon, work hard, and the telecom companies bite the bullet? Will Satyam see a new financial investor? As the clock ticks towards the new year, private equity fund managers are waiting with bated breath. So are we. With Sheetal Bansal in Mumbai, Subhashti Rajgopal in NDTV.
2008 has been a year that has seen its fair share of downsizing. But conversely, this has been good for employers who have been able to get in good quality senior management at attractive prices. One industry that seems to be doing just that here in India is the financial services industry, specifically investment banking and brokerage, that has picked up a number of senior management personnel, including foreigners, at attractive prices. Here's our story by Deepika Thaplial. While most brokerage houses have seen layoffs across levels this quarter, there are some players who are cashing in on the opportunity to poach from foreign firms to get skilled management at cheaper costs. This in a bid to try break into the big league when the tide turns. People are willing to transition their careers also. Like a head fund manager joining us as a broking head is happening because people are looking at long-term prospects. Foreign firms have frozen hiring given the carnage in the West, making local brokerages appear more attractive. In mid-September, Andrew Holland quit DSP Merrill Lynch to join Ambit Capital. And the trend has continued, albeit cautiously. Anand Rati appointed Roy Rodriguez as director, investment banking in November. Prior to this, Rodriguez was head of investment banking for India at Bear Stearns. Centrum Broking appointed Dan Harwood and Sanjeev Putney, who earlier served overseas in hedge fund houses. Religair, Kavi, MK, Avendus have also hired selectively. Experts, however, do not expect any drastic pickup and hiring in the coming months and believe downsizing in the sector has been done with. The trend is going to be flat because whatever is happening in the West is not anticipated that things will, you know, be back in action again in the next six to eight months. Brokerages are now preferring to save more for an experienced hand rather than getting two or three others at the same cost. But it will be too early to say that hiring will pick up across the sector. And for those who have not been cost conscious in the past, there may be more pain ahead. In Mumbai, Deepika Thaplial for NDTV. The pain for the industry called steel though continues despite uh, falling prices and protection from some of the government moves that we have seen. Some of the raw material prices have still not corrected though that is something which is of an aberration which the industry continues to try and clear up. If steel is melting, how can its raw material prices stay firm? Steel makers are pressurizing coking coal suppliers to cut the prices ahead of expiry of long-term contracts, a move that will give them a huge relief. That too at a time when steel prices have corrected about 50% in last three months. This is crucial because India is deficient in coking coal and depends on imports to meet its needs. Most of the steel companies who are buying uh, from the coal companies on long term basis, they have been uh, requesting the uh, coal companies uh, to consider uh, reducing the prices interim instead of waiting until the uh, existing contract is over. Coking coal prices are at $300 per ton and analysts expect a correction of at least $100. Quite significant at a time when steel prices are hovering around $500 per ton. If the, uh, these players will sell at a lower price, it is only going to benefit their, you know, the industry, uh, the end user industry. And effectively the demand will be you know, maintained. But a little difficult. It's difficult, but hopes are still high. The coking coal suppliers to India like Extrata, Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton, BMA are right now in negotiations with the Japanese steel mills who follow a calendar year contract. And post that, based on those contracts, these suppliers are expected to renegotiate with the Indian steel mills as well. In Mumbai, Nisha Podar for NETV. Right, time for a quick break on Profit at Night. When we come back, much more. Stay tuned here. The big question is, has DOT got the message from the lackluster participation of foreign telcos in the pre-bid conference for 3G auction that this may not be the right time for holding the 3G auction? On to the big exclusive story on Profit at Night uh, with NDTV and it's about India's real estate company Unitech. It's an NDTV exclusive. The biggest news stories break first on NDTV Profit. We can expect a soft launch of Jamnagar 2, uh, that's the new refinery. The commissioning of the refinery will indeed happen on Dhirubhai's birthday. 
we have heard from sources that they are trying to renegotiate uh, negotiate between the brothers and uh, resolve out of court. Anything that impacts you, see it first on NDTV Profit. SPI and Tata Intercom present NDTV's Seven Wonders of India in partnership with Incredible India. Vote for the Seven Wonders of your state and finally the Seven Wonders of India. Log on to sevenwondersofindia.ndtv.com. Seven Wonders of India is co-presented by Tata Intercom, Suno Dil Ki Avaaz, and State Bank of India. Pure banking, nothing else. In association with Rangoli Easy Clean, No Dag No Dhabba. Print partners, Danik Bhaskar and Matrubhumi. आपको लगता है रिटायर होने पे जिंदगी ऐसी ही होगी पर ऐसा ना हुआ तो बेच दिया बच्चे बाहर सेटल हो गए तो इतने बड़े घर की क्या जरूरत बिरला सन लाइफ इंश्योरेंस के रिटायरमेंट सॉल्यूशन ताकि महंगाई चाहे बढ़ती रहे आप कल भी जिए आज की तरह हेलो टुडे आई एम इन द लवली टाउन ऑफ बोर्नविल होल्डिंग अ बोर्नविल मेड इन बोर्नविल नाउ दे हैव ए tradition here that you're supposed to open it gently listen to the snap take in the aroma but before you can eat it you have to ask yourself have you earned it well back in the day the old chaps had to beat the french at war or the aussies in cricket before they could enjoy it <laughs> british mumbo jumbo have i earned it no but i'm going to eat it anyway from precious honey and cocoa comes a dark chocolate so fine legend has it and i've learned you don't just buy a bourneville you earn it met life mein hamara har insurance plan aapke parivar ko rakhta hai surakshit aur bhavishya ko sunishchit met life man ki shanti guaranteed there is a woman behind every successful man yeah they have to be there i was hooked by mukesh yes booked by mukesh <laughs> okay. and i was cooked by mukesh <laughs> most men snow my husband talks that's embarrassing <laughs> if you love me i need to be told i'm loved if loving sanjay is not right i would rather be wrong all my life for me whatever he would touch would be gold bahut acha hai For all the news and all the anti-social views, for all the movies and all the reviews, for all the music and all its fervor, for all the cricket and all its color, for all the bulls and the fewest of bears, for astrology telling you of tomorrow's shares, mobile.ndtv.com for the India that's always on the go. Welcome back to Profit at Night. Microsoft or Google, who will win that mother of all techie wars in 2009? Two of the most successful companies of all time will continue to target each other in the new year. Microsoft is investing heavily and thinking of inventing about 25 new products for the coming year. Google though plans to hit back at the big M by launching get this, its own operating system amongst other things. Meenakshi Shekhar brings you a report on the tech mahabharat of 2009. The countdown has begun. Google will launch its own operating system a year from now. No wonder Microsoft is running harder to search for formulas that will help it survive. With its latest offering Windows Vista falling flat on consumer expectations, Microsoft is pumping money into research and development despite the slowdown. After all, it's a battle for survival. When we talk about uh, investment, we are talking about the number of people that we have working. And we have about uh, we started with this organization with 20 people. Now we have about 1,500 people in this organization, and working on all the key major products of Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft plans to add 10% more to its workforce by mid next year, and has lined up as many as 25 new products, not just to tap your desktop, but also to sit on your mobile screens. 
We are currently, for instance, you know, over 30 different uh, discussions with different product groups worldwide, including IDC, but also in Redmond and so on. And about uh, maybe 6 to 10 are already in advanced stages of technology transfer. Microsoft may have had its setbacks, with its Yahoo deal fizzling out and customers not lapping up its products. But the tech giant is now determined to ensure its desktop dominance in the future. And R&D is clearly the key. In Hyderabad, Minakshi Shekhar, NDTV. Well, moving on to the 30th of December and tomorrow to 31st, everyone is in a New Year's mode. But it looks like the holiday destinations are taking a bit of a brunt of the slowdown and the Mumbai terror attacks, thanks to which the most favourite destination, Goa, is not so high on the holiday spot. It seems that it's Christmas or New Year's thing passes by. It's the annual New Year pit stop, but Ronnie and Brenda are not upbeat. So usually for New Year's, what do you do? We used to come down to the beach, come down, have a few drinks, have a meal in the shack, watch all the fireworks right along the beach, stay till maybe 3, 4 in the morning and then wonder who. Has this season has disappointed you? Definitely disappointed. But the Gidwanis and friends are only too happy to be back to their annual haunt. I think it's normal. None of them find any, any change or any threat as such. Some hotels have toned down celebrations. Others are sticking to their original plans. Occupancy may have fallen by about 5% just for the 31st. But overall for the month of December, we have seen a slight regression in occupancy by about 12% or so. The only difference this time is a very uh, tightened and very sensitive security system which is in place. Even the king of good times, Vijay Malya, is staying away from the beaches of Goa to stay around because there is no beach party happening here, which means his well-turned-out celebrity bash will not take place. So for those of you who want some peace and quiet, perhaps Goa is still the place to head to. In Goa with cameraman Umesh Danwalkar, Keith Angre for NDTV. Interestingly, Shivnath, back in 1999, Goa was voted the number one spot to bring in the millennium in the world. Things obviously a little different now. Well, I know why you're hard selling Goa, because you wish you were there. Unfortunately, you're not. You'll have to wait for another year, Mihir. But uh, yes, you're right. It obviously has fallen off the radar map. We'll take a quick break when we come back much more. Well, yesterday I watched the picture of Shah Rukh Khan. <laughs> Which one? I've forgotten the title. <laughs> what does one do to become Shahanshah, sir? Shah Rukh, I'm telling you, one day definitely will become Shahanshah. LIC presents the NDTV Indian of the Year. For nominees and instructions on how to vote, log on to www.ndtv.com or you can also log on to mobile.ndtv.com on your WAP phone browsers. LIC presents the NDTV Indian of the Year. You decide. NDTV Indian of the Year is presented by LIC of India. In association with HP Pavilion Notebooks, the computer is personal again. Investing in commodities. Naturally, NCDEX, the commodity exchange that delivers. Visit us at ncdex.com. We can't send you back in time. But we can help you live those moments again. Whenever there's a moment of joy, chances are we played a small part in it. Coca-Cola India. Little drops of joy. 2008, when business was hit like never before. The extent of damage has been the largest ever. But the India story is still intact with some good news. The most attractive growing economies is India. NDTV Profit, as always, first were the big names. So you have hundreds and thousands of deposit money in your bank. Are they safe? And big faces. India seems to be doing a piecemeal approach. We are impacted by the indirect impact of the crisis. To a landmark here. The historic $700 billion bailout plan has been written into law. Watch special coverage of the year, which saw the strongest become the weakest. Jobs are being lost, salaries are coming down. People simply don't have the money to spend. 2008, 
the year best forgotten. Tomorrow night at 9 on NDTV. Profit. Brought to you by Birla Sun Life Insurance Retirement Solutions. Vote and win with the Car and Bike Show. The nominees for the CNB Viewer's Choice Bike of the Year are A. Hero Honda Passion Pro B. Yamaha FZ16 C. TVS Flame D. Bajaj Discover 135 E. Honda Stunner CBF To vote, just type CNB, a space, and your choice and SMS it to 56388 or email your choice to cnb at ndtv.com You can also log on to www.ndtv.com or ndtvprofit.com and cast your vote online. On your web phone browser, go to mobile.ndtv.com to cast your vote. If your choice is the winner, you could ride away on the viewer's choice bike of the year. Vote now. Welcome back. You're watching Profit at Night. Just before we went into the break, we talked about Goa falling off the radar map for holidaymakers during this New Year's Eve. It's no different in some of the big metros where because of the turbulent year that we have had in 2008, people are just toning down the way New Year is to be brought in. How do we say goodbye to 2008? National consensus, a year to forget. But do we wish it away with a quiet candlelit dinner or do we welcome the new year with a loud bash? In Mumbai at least, it's quieter. We're hoping to at least do 500 people and bookings at the, at the moment are only around about 100, 150. So we, we've still got a fair way to go. We're expecting to do around 250 to 300 odd people and we have say around 40% of that already sold out. The Royal Meridian will cost 2,500 per person, 50% lesser than last year. For the wine lovers, 25% lower prices at the Grand Hyatt. In Chennai, Taj Konnamaran Residency have scaled down plans. Fisherman's Cove has grand plans to usher in 2009. In Bangalore, Athena's at the Leela will cost 3,500 a couple, about 20% more than last year for all Bangalore hotels. The capital, however, is to have a quiet New Year. And in anticipation of a poor response, prominent hotels have slashed their New Year packages by 15 to 20%. I have been uh, in the city for many, many years and one has been seeing, uh, you know, the New Year's happening. But this year definitely there is, uh, it's a very somber kind of, uh, you know, feel to the whole atmosphere. We are seeing out a year that it seems everyone wants to forget and especially so the financial capital. Even as the rest of the country celebrates New Year, it's a low-key affair in Mumbai. But what everyone's hoping is that the year to come is going to be a better one. In Mumbai, Yamini Tindyal and NDTV. Okay, let's get a check on the weather now. The past couple of days have been especially challenging in the north uh, because of the onset of fog. In fact, last night it was difficult to drive uh, because visibility was not there beyond just a few feet ahead. For a more comprehensive view on the weather around the country, here's Divya Vadwa. here in the North Delhi continue to battle with fog two days in a row. Visibility levels were down to zero and runway was less than 100 meters. 21 flights were delayed and eight were cancelled. The situation is not likely to improve till New Year's. Not just over Delhi but Punjab, Haryana and West Uttar Pradesh as well. Minimum temperatures are likely to fall but by the 3rd of January a fresh western disturbance is likely to cause a rise in the night temperatures. While Srinagar is at minus two with Delhi down to eight degrees today. Well towards the eastern side, showery weather is in store over sub in West Bengal and Sikkim along with the northeastern states of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and Meghalaya. Well, night temperatures are just as expected over Kolkata, Bhuvneshwar and Patna. Well, towards the southern side, the region remains mostly dry with the exception of Andaman and Nicobar Islands that has some wet weather in store. Minimum over Chennai is at 20 degrees with Bangalore at 14 degrees. Well, lastly, towards west and central parts of the country, four conditions persist over North Rajasthan for the next 24 hours and minimum temperatures have fallen by 2 to 3 degrees below normal in most places but Bhopal, Udaipur, Baroda and Raipur are just as expected. Well that's it on the weather report. All right it's going to be the 31st of December the last day of the year but uh, activity will continue as far as some of the macro data is concerned 
from across the West. In the United States, you will see the jobless claims data come out. Also, markets, however, remain shut across the world. Germany, Japan, Switzerland, Thailand and South Korea. US will be open. First of uh, January 09, US will be shut though. Uh, we are also looking uh, back in Mumbai, last day for the markets. We are all hoping that it will be a cheerful uh, goodbye. We are also looking at a new store launch uh, by Chroma and that's uh, to be done by Mr. R.K. Krishna Kumar, uh, who is a member of the Tata Group as well as Mr. Sunawala. All right, also in Delhi, Kuldeep uh, Goel of uh, BSNL launches interactive video services. A lot of business tomorrow, December 31st, around the world and here at NDTV Profit. Indeed, this has been a big year for business reporting with so much action and almost everyone here has been working hard consistently throughout the year. Year end, new beginnings coming up. That too and uh, much, much more. Also to remind all our viewers, uh, stay tuned to the channel. Lots still coming up in terms of another show. But all of us, uh, from all of us here right now, goodbye. Here we are to talk about what India should look like through your eyes. For Carlos Ghosn, is India the next big thing? One of the big things happening today in the industry. This 500-page report written by Anil Ambani could add a new twist. Infosys has once again surprised the market. What do you think has undergone the mindset of Indian corporate? More respect for India. The World Trade Organization talks have collapsed. Brand India, that's what the theme seems to be. Shivnath Chokral for NDTV. मनी मंथ रिलायंस मनी के साथ आपके पैसे का सारा हिसाब किताब यूलिप एक लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोडक्ट है सेबी इतने बड़े बड़े रिस्क फैक्टर्स देती है लेकिन कितने लोग वो रिस्क फैक्टर्स पढ़ते हैं कब लगाएं कहां लगाएं शेयर मार्केट कैसी नहीं है आप एज ए लॉन्ग टर्म इन्वेस्टमेंट एवेन्यू इसको देखिए आपको अच्छा रिटर्न मिलेगा बैंकिंग सिस्टम है इस हालत में भी एक बहुत साउंड स्टेज पे और कैसे बढ़ा यू नीड सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट टू सपोर्ट योर इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रिलायंस मनी प्रेजेंट्स मनी मंत्र शुक्रवार शाम साढ़े सात बजे सिर्फ एन डी प्रॉफिट पर रिलायंस मनी फ्रांस मनी मंत्रा द न्यू एक्सपीरियर एक्स वन मल्टीपल डेस्कटॉप फॉर योर मल्टीपल आईज द वर्ल्ड ऑफ बिजनेस इन थर्टी मिनट्स equities to the rupee and both seem equally turbulent it is both a meeting of mind and heart the margins are under pressure live from mumbai that's a nice sustained climb right through the day and delhi we had a crr cut this week and more liquidity boosters could be coming clearly uh, the deposits in ipo bank are safe there is no reason at all to act in haste or give room for panic business prime time weeknights at 8 on ndtv profit Business Prime Time brought to you by Ineos, Japan's number one engine oil, now in India. Nokia E Series.